Welcome to a year of HitchcockMovies.com. We are your hosts, Jeff and Diane, and this is movie number 24 from 1944, Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Uh, the two-year, uh, or rather, the, the two-picture deal at uh, Universal is over. Uh, David O. Selznick, as we mentioned, loaned out Alfred Hitchcock to Universal for what turned out to be Saboteur and Shadow of a Doubt. Worked out great. Everybody got rich, mostly David O. Selznick. Um, so uh, the game becomes, uh, well, which, which studio is he going to loan Alfred Hitchcock out to next? And it turns out that uh, Daryl Zanuck from uh, 20th Century Fox wanted to work with Alfred Hitchcock, which is great if you're, you're him, uh, because he left him alone. And as we've said many, many times, it just wasn't going to work out with, uh, with Selznick producing uh, what, what Alfred uh, Hitchcock did. So um, <clears throat> this ends up being the third and final World War II movie that Alfred Hitchcock does, uh, the first being Foreign Correspondent, the second being a Saboteur. Uh, and you know, we had those, those British spy thrillers that were leading up to World War II, but you know, certainly uh, they, they weren't about it. Uh, the, these, these three movies were, and, and finally tonight's movie, Lifeboat. This, this ends up being a, an idea that Alfred Hitchcock had uh, about, uh, about a lifeboat. Uh, it really grabbed from the headlines of the day, uh, World War II raging. Uh, what kept popping up in the news was uh, uh, stories where, where people would be, you know, ships would be sunk at sea and people would end up being rescued in these lifeboats. And uh, he really came up with this idea. He thought, wouldn't it be neat to do a, a story about what, what, you know, what could go on in the days while they're waiting to be rescued. Uh, he actually wanted Ernest Hemingway to write the screenplay. And he wrote him a big, long letter detailing his ideas and what he wanted and this, this great outline for it and, and really hoped that he would do it. And it turned out that, that Hemingway wrote him back. He was flattered and, and just said that he was too busy. Uh, he was overwhelmed with other things and, and couldn't do it. Uh, maybe our loss, maybe not. Uh, they went through a few other writers, but eventually settled on John Steinbeck. And uh, that's, that's pretty cool. I think Alfred Hitchcock was, was pretty happy with that. John Steinbeck was a, was a big name. He had already written... Uh, among other things, of Mice and Men, and he had written uh, The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, both would, would turned it into great, successful movies, so this seemed like a natural come up with an original idea. And at the time, Steinbeck thought that would be a good idea to write this. And, uh, what he ended up writing, though, was not what Hitchcock wanted. I've not read the 100-page novelette that, that Steinbeck uh, gave him, but uh, it is not what, what we see tonight. And we'll talk a bit more about that at the, uh, the conclusion uh, of the movie, but um, his, his contributions are very limited in what you see. Um, let's just say, uh, that for now, that many changes were made from, from what he came up with. They, they brought in another screenwriter called uh, Joe Swirling, and uh, Joe Swirling pr pretty much uh, wrote a lot of this movie with Alfred Hitchcock, uh, Hitchcock and, and Alma Reville, his wife. Uh, Joe Swirling wrote the screenplay for lots of movies. The Pride of the Yankees with Gary Cooper. Uh, he was involved in It's a Wonderful Life with Jim Stewart. We always keep mentioning It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart, but uh, boy, that's a great movie. Um, but so, so this is not John, Ste St John Steinbeck. So if you're a Steinbeck person, don't be looking for Steinbeck-isms in this movie because there aren't any. Um, yeah, he, Steinbeck was actually a war correspondent in World War II, so it sort of made sense that they that they wanted him involved, but uh, it just uh, it just didn't happen. So um, now now lastly involved, they they brought in Ben Hecht to do the ending. Now that's a name you might remember from Foreign Correspondent because they didn't know how to end Foreign Correspondent, and they stopped shooting. And I think Hitchcock went home to England, came back, and they brought in this guy, the script doctor, Ben Hecht, to. to read the script, see what had been done, and then write an ending that's really, really good. And you know, we all remember that tacked on ending uh, that we saw at the end of Foreign Correspondent. But uh, Ben Hecht is, is a cool guy. Boy, he's written a million scripts. He would write a script in two weeks that was completely finished. And boy, some, some big, you know, Scarface, the original, 1932, The Front Page, His Girl Friday, Gunga, Gunga Din, way too many to mention. But, but seriously, he was more of a script doctor after that. And, and when a movie just wasn't working and everybody got frustrated, they would bring in this guy and very quickly, Gone with the Wind is a great example. He, he virtually saved that, that movie. He just comes up with an ending and makes it all okay. And this is a great example in, in Lifeboat tonight, apparently, where he was brought in to, uh, to write an ending. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock will, will uh, work with him uh, very specifically. He'll be credited uh, for writing with Hitchcock and Ben Hecht for uh, next week's Spellbound and Notorious, which is coming up. Uh, he'll be uncredited for the parody in case Rope and Strangers on a Train. But it is worth noting that, uh, that, that Ben Hecht was involved in this one. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
so uh, just wanted to tell you about a couple actors to look out for. Uh, a big name at the time, uh, and it's kind of starring Tallulah Bankhead. Not really starring her because there's lots of people in this movie, there isn't one real star, but, but she was the big name, the big famous name that Alfred Hitchcock specifically wanted to bring. He thought, who's the person most, you know, least likely to end up in a predicament like this? And he picked her and she was very happy to do it. Um, she was uh, she was not a movie star. She was a, a, a legend of the London uh, the, the, the London stage. Uh, lots and lots of plays. Uh, she was just an outlandish personality. Uh, just a, just outlandish behavior. Um, she was probably famous for being famous, and she, she really you know who can we think of that's like that today? But but uh, just a, just a really neat lady. Uh, one of her quotes uh, when she was talking about herself was, "I'm as pure as the driven slush." And uh, boy, that says it all. It, just for fun, you, you might want to read her her page on Wikipedia. And some of the things that she did at parties, some of the things she said is uh, is unbelievable. But uh, yeah, she's in this. Um, also in this to look for is uh, is Hume Cronin. Uh, we we saw him. He was the neighbor who kept popping in in in. Uh, Shadow of a Doubt, and there I was talking about the best way to uh, to murder somebody. He's in this one too. You'll probably recognize him. Um, we'll see. Uh, we won't see him again. Actually, this is the last Hitchcock. Uh, uh, he was the guy married to Jessica Tandy, and, and he and Jessica were, were huge friends, great friends for life with with Alfred Hitchcock and Alma. Um, we we don't see him again in any of these Hitchcock movies, although he does work with him on the script in Under Capricorn and Rope. And of course, we'll see Jessica Tandy in The Birds, but uh, this is it for for Hume. So, uh, so, so one of the last things I want to say about this film, uh, without giving anything away, it is one of the four limited setting films that Alfred Hitchcock did. And and you know, if you haven't figured it out yet, pretty much this whole movie takes place on a lifeboat. And we'll see how that works out. Is that going to be claustrophobic? Is it going to be hard to watch as a movie, as a 90-minute movie? That's an interesting thing we'll, we'll want to see. The other three movies uh, are Rope, which is entirely set in an apartment and filmed very interestingly. We'll get to that. Rear Window, which is almost exclusively set from one man's point of view, Jimmy Stewart with a, with a broken leg and a big cast on his leg. And Dial for Murder, which if I'm not mistaken, uh, we've seen it but not for a long time. Uh, set takes place in an apartment, so uh, so something to look for. Uh, speaking of things to look for, there's a cameo to look for. Yeah, he's in this one, uh, which is amazing because, as I just said, the whole thing takes place on a lifeboat. So uh, look for that. Um, so good. So uh, let's watch this this film, a film that caused great controversy at the time. Believe it. We'll uh, we'll talk about that after. And earned Alfred Hitchcock uh, another his second Oscar nomination for best director. Uh, he'll not win here either. He doesn't ever win. Uh, so good. So from 1944, uh, Lifeboat. Let's watch. <laughs>